Welcome everyone to the King Angel Play Show. Oops. <laughs> I'm King Angel, your favorite variety streamer. Hope everyone is having a great day so far. I am, wait, let me put this down a little bit. I, I might've put it up a little bit way too much. I really hope you can hear it. It's old Norse music that goes hand in hand with today's amazing topic, which is Norse myth <clears throat> sorry, Norse mythology. I love it. I love everything mythology. I did one past stream that was uh, Greek mythology, and that was great. We learned a lot, and what we already knew, we were able to uh, refresh on that information and add some more interesting facts to it. Uh, we learned about 
a pantheon of the gods uh, with uh, Greek mythology and we also went through the creation of it and whatnot but I didn't really go in too deep or much actually into the history of Greek mythology so for this uh, stream uh, I thought to myself yeah why not give a little bit of a uh, brief history of how and uh, when Norse mythology was created. So basically I'm dividing today's stream into two segments. First one is brief history. I'll just be talking about uh, when it was created, where, by who, uh, just interesting uh, historical details about Norse mythology. And then after that, we'll jump right into uh, three videos that I have. One will explain uh, a little bit, just just briefly about the pantheon of Norse mythology, and they also touch briefly on history as well, which is awesome. It's a little little bit of both. Second video, we'll, we will be diving into the creation of the gods, and it'll be more towards the lore and mythology behind uh, basically what the uh, Scandinavians created. And it's extremely interesting. Third video is uh, another uh, brief but more in-depth uh, information when it comes to uh, the mythology of uh, Norse and whatnot. So it's extremely interesting. I'm very glad that everyone is here to view and hey chop how are you today hope you're doing well uh so yeah i am feeling pretty great today i hope everyone's having a great saturday i hope everyone is having a great end of week starting the week tomorrow uh, if you're on the other side of the world you're already on sunday so i hope everything's going well on your sunday uh while you're here uh, please check out my link tree. It's in the about section in that new uh, brand picture that I have with all of my information there. Uh, just join my Discord. That way uh, you can keep up with updates that I am going to be posting. Topics. Uh, we'll be able to choose what we want to. What I together we can choose the next live stream that I uh, that I'll be doing. Whatever topic I have. A long list of topics that I would love to go through all pretty interesting ranging from you know mythology to uh, historical uh, events we'll do am I the asshole again we can also there's so many things movie reviews music reviews obviously keeping away from copyrighted stuff and you know but I have a lot of vinyls as well there's a whole bunch of things that we can do together uh, by joining my Discord channel, helping me grow in that manner, we can be able to engage better. And also, I have a whole bunch of social media, so by clicking on that picture in my About section, that's uh, where you'll be able to find the best ways you can support me. I am, again, King Angel. I'm a variety streamer. I do reactions, mythology, true crime. I love true crime. So uh, I do True Crime Wednesdays. That's my main topic. I also do, uh, on the weekends, Saturdays is when I do mostly the variety stream. So whatever topic I find interesting during the week, that's what's going on this, uh, this, day's chat, uh, this day's stream. So thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for being here, if you're here. And let's get right into it. I am digging this Norse music. Let's give it a minute. Hold on. I'll even put it up. I hope everyone can hear it. Chop, if you're there, can you hear the music? Yeah, that's all, that's that's dope. That's pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. Of 
cool. Well, that was a little tidbit of some Norse mythology music. And let's get right to it. We'll jump right into the first part of the stream, which is the brief history part of it and kind of a brief explanation of how this was all created. So we'll start off with the first part. It's Norse or Scandinavian mythology is the body of myths of the North Germanic peoples, stemming from Norse paganism and continuing after the Christianization of Scandinavia and into the Scandinavian folklore of the modern period. The northernmost extension of Germanic mythology and stemming from Proto-Germanic folklore, Norse mythology consists of tales of various deities, beings, and heroes derived from numerous sources from both before and after the pagan period, including medieval manuscripts, archaeological representations, and folk tradition. And there we can see a little depiction of uh, what would be animated versions of, I mean, I think they look pretty awesome. And further into the stream, we'll be going through the gods and their uh, roles in this mythology. And it's all, it's all so interesting. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of anxious. Can't wait till we get to that part. But Norse mythology is primarily attested in dialects of Old Norse, a North Germanic language spoken by the Scandinavian people during the European Middle Ages and the ancestor of modern Scandinavian languages. The majority of these Old Norse texts were created in Iceland, where the oral tradition stemming from the pre-Christian inhabitant of the island was collected and recorded in manuscripts. This occurred primarily in the 13th century, which is actually this one here. And that's a little, little picture of Iceland. Uh, one of my life goals is to visit Iceland. I, I am absolutely in love with that country. Uh, my favorite musician of all time is from Iceland. I mean, it's, I don't want to go there because of her, but she does play a role in the whole thing. And I absolutely love her. But yeah, I definitely would love to visit Iceland one day. It is part of my travel life goals and I will achieve it, most definitely. Moving on, so the last thing, so it occurred primarily in the 13th century. Okay, so these texts include the prose Edda or Edda composed in the 13th century by the Icelandic scholar, law speaker, and historian Snorri Sturluson, and the poetic and the poetic Edda or Edda, a collection of poems from earlier traditional material anonymously compiled in the 13th century, which is actually pretty cool so this is pretty interesting uh, so although the pre-christian Norse had the writing system of the runic alphabet runes were used for brief messages such as inscriptions on memorials not for longer works as noted the great tales of the gods and heroes were transmitted orally until the arrival of Christianity which because it was based on the revelation of scripture, encourage literacy. Christian scribes preserved the tales, either to argue their validity or, it seems, as historical curiosities or for reasons that are unclear. So, we have a little example of the runes. Uh, if... I mean, obviously, if you've seen any uh, 
Tales of Vikings or if you've recently seen uh, if you've seen the, re- the a movie like Midsummer, it's a more recent movie that doesn't really have to do with Vikings per se. Uh, you'll see that they used runes throughout the whole movie. I mean, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And uh, I really, really love how in each scene there's a rune present and each rune has its own meaning, which is, uh, we can see here on screen. Uh, I mean, the top one is strength. Uh, we have uh, fertility, defense, joy and it's it's awesome how uh, Ari Aster uh, he's the director of the movie included all of these runes in it and everything from like the tables where they're sitting to the final scene it's just magnificent movie but they make great use of uh, runes so that's extremely interesting moving on so uh Fun fact, before we start the videos, uh, originally the days of the week were or are named after uh, Norse mythology gods. So, in this case, we have Sunday, which is honoring Suna, Norse goddess of the sun. Hey, Senpai, thank you so much for joining chat. I appreciate it. Uh, Monday, in honor of Manny. Norse god of the moon and brother to Suna. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm probably not saying the names the way they're supposed to be said, but yeah. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, named after Tyr, god of war, whose sacrifice helped bind Fenrir. Wednesday, honoring Odin, also given as. Wooden, king of the gods. Thursday, Thor's day, in honor of the god of thunder and the sky. Friday, in honor of Frigg, or Freja, or Freja. Destroying those names. <laughs> uh, who may have once been a single goddess. And Saturday, honoring the Roman god Saturn among whose attribute was renewal. And the seventh day of the week was laundry day for the Norse. So they kept the Roman name. So, yeah, that's why that one, <laughs> I guess they didn't want to go with the laundry part. Uh, that are that is actually some interesting facts uh, and just a brief history about Norse mythology. So uh, we know now that it was created around the 13th century. It's two different... Uh, the sources for this, uh, for the mythology, comes from two different uh, books, which is uh, the text. One is the Prose Edda, or Eda, and the second one is the Poetic Edda. Uh, the Prose is the one written by Snorri Sturluson, and both written, about, uh, written around the 13th century. Uh, and again, they were written with, in runes. Uh, this was pre-Christian. And I guess once uh, Christianity came through and uh, I guess brought with them literacy, in a sense, well, I guess historically, historically speaking, then uh, it was translated into actual words that could be then you know, put into a book and whatnot. But... That is, again, brief history of it. We will now be going into our first video. First one. I am so digging this music. So video number one. Let's all enjoy together. And see and hear about Norse mythology. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Mike Rugnetta, and this is Crash Course Mythology. Today, we're gonna try to do justice to the Norse pantheon. A very scary wolf, an amazing tree, a rainbow bridge, some frost giants, and way more than what I learned from reading Thor comics. No, 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 not you, Tote. 
Your TH is a plosive. We're talking voiceless dental fricative here. Thor. You know, this joke might work better in print. Mind that music. We met some of the Norse gods when we looked at one of their creation stories. The source for that myth and many other stories from Norse mythology is the Prose Edda, an Icelandic okay. compendium Edda. written by the amazingly named Snorri Sturluson around 1220 CE. This means that one of our main sources for the tales of Germanic and Scandinavian gods and goddesses comes from the far edge of their world. It's also important because the Prose Edda is relatively new. So one rainbow bridge that we're going to have to cross here is the way that later Christian ideas influence the existing version of these myths. Partly because of Snorri, there's a tendency to think of Norse mythology as belonging to Scandinavia, but that's not quite right. The Norse pantheon has roots in the religion and mythology of Germanic people who migrated into Europe. The Romans, especially our pal Tacitus, recorded what they understood of the Germanic tribe's beliefs, but they translated Germanic gods into their own terms. So Wotan, or Wodan, who we're calling Odin, became associated with Mercury. Tyr, or Tiwaz, a warrior god, became associated with the Roman god of war, Mars. And Thor mm. was Jupiter, or Jove. In their own terms, these are two sets of Norse deities. First, the Vanir, associated with the earth and fertility. They're the older set of gods. And second, the Aesir, associated with the sky. The Vanir were led by Freyr and Freya, brother and sister, and also king and queen. They were the children... Interesting. And it said that they were once, I guess, the same person? Or maybe not. Let me check my notes. That's actually pretty interesting. So, check in my notes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Frigg or Freja. My bad. This is F Freyr and Freja. Got it. Okay. Moving on. ...of Njord, who also has a terrific name. According to Sturluson, Freyr is an exceedingly famous god. He decides when the sun shall shine, when the rain come down, and along with that, the fruitfulness of the earth. And he is good to invoke for peace and plenty. He also brings about the prosperity of men. Hmm. So he is definitely the god that you want to honor if you're having a picnic. Well, him and Amaterasu, the Japanese sun goddess. And while we're at it, why not also Aphrodite? Because everyone has a thing for you get it. The Vanir and the Aesir warred, but eventually reconciled, hmm. and the Vanir came to live in Asgard, one of the nine mythical Norse worlds. Although they also have their own realm, Vanaheim, not to be confused with Anaheim, the realm of Walt Disney, oranges, and online video conferences. If you want the you humorous oh, okay. opinion, or where we take mythology <laughs> as an explanation of historical fact, do. this war may reflect a time where there were two competing religions among the tribal people of the north, which eventually teamed up. Vanir and Aesir, stronger together. Like Voltron, but gods. Another Norse god is Heimdall, also called the White God. He's associated with the sea because nine waves birthed him. It must have been a very chaotic day at the maternity ward. Heimdall was the sentry of the gods and the arch enemy of Loki, who you might know from his role as Tom Hiddleston. According to Sturluson, I do know that one. less sleep than a bird and can see a hundred leagues in front of him as well by night as by day. He can hear the grass growing on the earth and the wool on the sheep and everything that makes noise. Boy, poor And I believe, I mean... Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Heimdall played by it just Elba and Thor? Uh, great role, by the way. Uh, interesting fact about him, uh, like he said, you know, created by nine waves. That's <laughs> that does sound pretty cool, but they don't mention that in the Marvel universe, or or I just maybe didn't hear it. But that's pretty interesting there, and yeah, how we're seeing the development of. Uh, the creation of these gods like back in the day uh, a few <laughs> years ago before I started reading about like mythology like getting more into it uh, I used to think that it was only Odin, Thor 
and Loki, and that was basically it, and, you know, the whole mythology revolved around them without actually knowing that there's there's a whole pantheon of them just like in other mythologies. I I've, I've always, was always a little bit more interested in Greek mythology, but expanding uh, my focus on uh, other types of mythologies, I have discovered that there's so, there's just there's so just like Greek mythology, uh, these other mythologies from other uh, from other sections of the world are extremely interesting and they have their own lore and it goes really uh, uh, it goes really hand in hand with uh, everyday life and how uh, people back then would associate gods with you know nature they'd associate them with the passing of time, you know, they would give a meaning to everything by associating it to an action that a god was doing or uh, a god had some type of influence in it or they played a role in uh, allowing it to happen or not. It's it's just, it's extremely interesting and uh, learning more and more. Hey, Think, how are you today? Hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for joining chat. Uh, and just, again, hearing all this uh, about the pantheon and seeing how uh, each god played a ro played a role in this uh, in this lore, it's, I, t I find it very interesting. Uh, moving on, we'll continue. Heimdall, imagine going to a dinner party and listening to everyone chew. Some traditions place Heimdall in the Aesir, some in the Vanir. The Vanir are also associated with a golden boar said to travel above and below the earth like the sun. Gulenbursti, as it was called, appeared on warriors' crests and helmets, especially in Uppsala. Just like in Greece and Egypt, different gods in the Norse pantheon were worshipped in different regions. Thor is probably the most famous of the Aesir. Yeah. Probably the second most famous is Odin, Thor's dad. True. Odin is the father god who was associated with war, especially with the raw, almost ex- The all-father, all-seer. I mean, that, uh, yeah. If you play God of War, then especially the last one, you uh, should be pretty familiar with uh, the role Odin plays in the game, but how he is the all seer. Uh, it's well, go. It'll be explained a little bit more in the next video. But Mimir uh, is uh, obviously some, some a character that plays a very important role in in Norse mythology, and. Uh, Mimir in the game is the one that tells the stories of the gods and their pettiness, like he likes to call it. And they're extremely interesting, especially uh, if you really like the subject. Uh, it goes like they took actual mythology and they put it in the game and it, they made it make sense. And I just, again, I'm just, I'm fascinated by the subject. Uh, Fallen Angel, thank you so much for joining chat. I really appreciate that. Uh, I am really fascinated by this subject. It's this is so cool. Uh, hey, Mel Melons, thank you so much for joining chat. I really appreciate that follow as well. And Death Clutch, you as well. Thank you so much for joining chat. Uh, I will just uh, uh, get you updated. Uh, we are discussing Norse mythology today. Uh, we the video right now has just I went through a brief history of you know the creation of the lore of Norse mythology, where it came from. It originated in Iceland around the 13th century. Hey, Bowser, how are you today? Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for joining chat. Uh, 13th century, Iceland, and it was created by... Oh, sorry. Ah! I have my little notes here. Uh, his, plus, his name is a little bit difficult, but it's Snorri... Sturluson. And it's two texts, the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda, both created around the 13th century. And here, uh, they're just he's just going through a brief history of the pantheon of the gods and basically the roles that each one have. Right now, he's explaining Odin. Thank you very much for that, Bowser. Jenny, how are you today? Hope, you, hope you're having a great day. And... Thank you for that compliment, Bowser. I appreciate that. Okay, let me hit play here. Static warrior rage of berserkers. 
He was also a wizard who swayed battles through magic. Imagine like Gandalf, but with one eye, lots of muscles, and an unhealthy desire for arcane wisdom and a bit of a mean streak. Odin inherited his warrior god nature from his Germanic predecessors, Wodan and Tiwaz. As Kevin Wodan Crossley Holland remarked, Tiwaz. a culture finds hmm. the gods it needs and the Norse world needed a god to justify the violence that was one of its hallmarks. Basically, if you're a warlike system- Mine as well, Mel Mons. Mine as well. I, I, I really enjoy Greek mythology. I really do. But hopefully, with my mythology streams, it can pique your interest in other uh, in mythologies from other parts of the world as well. So, crossing fingers. <laughs> Society, a war god, is pretty convenient. Odin inspired victory and foresaw defeat with his shamanistic precognition. He was also the god of poetry, who traveled to the land of the giants, Jotunheim, to drink the mead of Jotunheim. poetry and bring it back to the Aesir and the Vanir. Mm, poetry mead. Another part of Odin's story is his sacrifice and rebirth as a wiser god. According to one version, he hung himself from the world tree so he could drink the mead of wisdom. I guess Odin couldn't stop at just one mead. This was when he sacrificed his eye to Indeed, Odin was married I like him to too. Frigg. A Hi, Cybuns. Thank you for joining chat. It. Odin's children Appreciate were Thor, it. whose mother was the earth itself, Baldur, the most beautiful of the gods, who was Baldur. killed by Hodur, his blind brother, and Tyr, although one source has Tyr's father as the giant Hymir. In some stories, Baldur is a human Grace, warrior, thank you so much for joining, chat. Vital. I appreciate Baldur that. Is the Love that emo. Of the gods, Love that black heart emo. That's spoken, awesome. And the most merciful. But it is a characteristic of his that once he has pronounced a judgment, it can never be altered. Odin has another son, Hermod the Bold, who was sent to retrieve Baldur from a city in the underworld, Niflheim, ruled by the goddess Hel. Yeah, that's oh. Hel with one single hockey stick. And she was said to be the daughter of Loki, who also helped kill Baldur. Loki is confusing. It's never clear whether he's a god or a giant, or even whether <laughs> he's good or evil. He's been called the son of two giants, but also the foster brother of Odin. He's a trickster. Something just clicked with God of War, the, with the game. Like, I'm not going to say it because I don't know. Like, hey, King of King of the Peanuts, thank you so much for joining chat. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say it because I don't know. There's may, maybe people that haven't played the game, but crazy how hearing this. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So maybe his uncertain pedigree. Makes Hi, Jenny. Sense. He's also a thief. Hope you're having a great day. Also, also sometimes helps the Aesir. He's the father of several monsters, including the World Serpent, Jormungand, the Wolf, Fenrir, and Hell. Not to put too fine a point on it, but Loki is the worst, as we're going to see in our episode on Ragnarok. The mythical event, not the comic book event, not the movie event, not even the Guar record, just the literal end of the world. Tyr is identified with war and justice. In some traditions, he's also a son of Odin, but as you've probably noticed, it's not exactly easy to pin down parentage in the Norse world. I blame those nine waves. Tyr's position as a god <laughs> of both waves. war and justice is interesting, given what we learned about Vikings in Crash Course world history. While known for their fearsome raiding, Vikings also had a strict legal code with certain elements of democratic governance, hmm. and they were also really into skiing. There are other gods in the Norse pantheon, but they don't really feature much. Bragi, a son of Odin, was another god of poetry, while Ullr was concerned mainly with archery and hitting the slopes. Yeah, that's right. There's a god of skiing. There's Vali, Odin's son, who avenged Baldur's death, and Vidar, son of Odin, and the giantess Greed avenged Odin's death. I'm gonna need an infographic. Oh, great. The Norse goddesses are relatively minor figures in the myths. Freya is the only one who seems to have personality. She's a goddess of love. Faithfulness to her husband, Freyr, is not her strong suit. Her strong suit is definitely her amazing feather jacket. She also has a cat drawn chariot. That is not a joke. And like Freya, goddess Gaifon is one of the Vanir, and she is associated with plowing, and fertility. Ear is a goddess of healing. Siofen and Lofen are goddesses of love. Var, punish. Agent Crazy, thank you so much for joining chat. I love Crash Course. I love them. They, I, they, the information, they make it accessible, fun, and animated. 
I mean, like, who doesn't like something like that? And they keep it right on point when it comes to the information that they're giving. Oh, yeah. I definitely, definitely like Crash Course. I mean, I'm a little too old. So I didn't have this around during high school, but definitely for the past few years, they have provided me with great information when it comes to mythology, which is a subject, I, a topic I love and am very passionate about. Plus other things, they, they talk about other things as well, which is great, but mostly like the explanation of the mythology of the different parts of the world. Yeah, to be honest with you, th this is probably one of the sources that I'll use the most when it comes to mythology, or at least as much as possible, because again, they, they just, they rock with the information that they give. Love seeing chat like that. Very, very. Those yeah. who betray their marriage oaths and nothing can be hidden from her. Sin with a Y is a goddess associated with justice and who couldn't love a goddess named Snatra, who is associated with wisdom Snatra. and self-discipline and also head colds. I'll be here all week. Snatra I'm doing great, King of the Penis. How are you today? A goddess of poetry whose main role seems to be Odin's drinking companion. Skull. Frigg is Odin's wife and the mother of multiple gods, but we don't know that much about her. She's a maternal goddess who mourns the loss of her son, Baldur, and was invoked by women in labor. Like Odin, she seemed to be able to know the future. Now, on hey, to Nate. a myth. How are you I'm today? I'm going to be honest, Norse myths are like doing the great. frat party of mythology. There's a lot of fighting and drinking and laughing, though there's no beer pong. First, some quick backstory. Oh, well, okay, well, then I'm championed saying. warriors, it's... picking his favorites and sending Valkyries to bring them to Valhalla, which seems it's... like a pretty nifty way to trap. The Valhalla? If um if you guys are familiar with uh, Norse mythology, dude, Valhalla sounds pretty awesome. Um, yeah, uh, I won't say the whole thing, but one of the one of it is uh, you drink and feast the best of the best every night. There are other things to the sentence that I'm not gonna say here that you'd have to look up. You can Google it, but that is like the first part of it, and that sounds pretty great to me. Cause I'm a foodie. Ooh, I love, I love to eat. So take me to Valhalla. Ba uh, <clears throat> hey, bubs. Thank you so much for joining chat. I appreciate that. Hope you have a great shower. I'm doing great, bubs. Kind of a grayish day today, which I thought was perfect to do some Norse mythology. And I'm, and I'm feeling good. <laughs> Thor was the god of farmers, and there were a lot of farmers in Scandinavia. But he was also a mighty warrior, huge, with a giant... Dude, I would love it, bubs. That would be my jam right there. I'm not gonna lie, Valhalla. Valhalla sounds like a fun place to be. Red beard. Not so bright, but who needs smarts when you're the god of thunder and lightning? He protected the Aesir and Vanir from giants, and in a stunning bit of surely coincidental wordplay, Mjolnir, hey Curly Snow, thank you so much for joining hammer, chat. Was also Appreciate a that. Of fertility. Hope you're having a great day. One day, Thor woke up and couldn't find his hammer. He sent Loki to locate it. Loki borrowed Freya's sweet falcon jacket, turned it into an actual falcon, and went searching. He found his way to the hall Phantom of the giant Thrym, Thank you so much for joining chat. Said that Appreciate he'd it. stolen Thor's hammer, and he wouldn't give it back unless Freya agreed to marry him. Freya said, over my dead body. So Heimdall, the sentry god, came up with a brilliant idea. Put Thor in a wedding dress and have him pretend to be Freya. The other gods laughed and Thor sulked, but Loki prevailed on him because without his hammer, the gods were vulnerable to giants. So they found a giant wedding dress and a thick veil and headed off to Jotunheim. Once there, Thrym threw his new bride and her bridesmaid, Loki, a wedding feast. Thor ate an entire ox, eight salmon, all the sweets, and three horns of mead. When Thrym commented that he'd never seen a woman eat so much, Loki explained that Freya was so excited to be married that she hadn't eaten for eight days. Thrym seemed <laughs> okay. satisfied, but then he peeked under her veil and saw his bride's glowing Hey Joseph, thank eyes. you so much for joining Loki, chat. Again, I really appreciate it. His bride was Hope you're so having a great day. That she hadn't slept for seven days. Finally, Thrym offered up Mjolnir as a wedding symbol, saying, put Mjolnir between her knees so that Var will hear our marriage oath and give her blessing. Thor snatched it up, ripped off his veil, and did what he does best, clobbered some giants. He crushed Thrym's skull and killed every other giant at the wedding feast, including the women. The tale ends, 
And so Thor, <laughs> son of Odin, won back his hammer. Thanks, Thought Bubble. That was awesome and disturbing and, of course, soaked in mead and blood. Norse gods, like Greek Whoa. ones, are all too human. And they seem to misbehave accordingly. But That's unlike crazy. other mythic traditions, the Norse sagas seem to lean less heavily on metaphor. They're rollicking adventure tales perfect for Vikings, lusty warriors who like nothing more than a roasted ox, a few horns of ale, and a good punch up. Oh, and also skiing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Well, that was pretty awesome. Loved it. That was a great explanation. That last story about Thor was this video pretty. Awesome. Not gonna lie. Okay, so this is our next video, and it is Norse mythology explained in 15 minutes. Let's go. Come to form was Muspelheim in the south, a bright land engulfed in fire and guarded by Surt with his flaming sword. To the north formed Nipple. I think it has to be out of the ones that was explained in the last video. Hmm. Probably Freyr. Or maybe Odin. Because I, I see myself as a leader. Dark Prince, thank you so much for following. I really appreciate that. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, but I think that it would be, yeah, probably Freyr. Uh, let's see how Thor is going to be depicted in God, in God of War. Balder, Balder is that's pretty badass too. Not gonna lie, but yeah, I think mine has to has to be between Freyr and 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 Balder, and definitely, and Odin third, like you said, that makes a lot of sense. Hell yeah. Behind the freezing land of fog, containing the spring Hevergilmir, from where the primordial rivers began to flow. These rivers flowed into the void and began to freeze. Agent Crazy, thank you so much for following. Really appreciate that. The moisture rising from the ice froze, creating layers of rime across the glacial landscape. The south of the void was brightened by the sparks and embers flying out of Muspelheim, creating a warm breeze which drifted towards the icy north. Whoa. When the rime was touched by the breeze, it began to melt. Droplets so far, so good. How about yours, Dark Prince? And took the form of Ymir, the first of the frost giants. Ymir. When Ymir lay down to sleep, the sweat from his left armpit formed two children, and his legs formed a six-headed son. From them descended the frost giants. The drops okay. from this rhyme then formed the cow Adumla, whose milk Ymir used for sustenance. Adumla sustained herself by licking the salty, rhyme-covered stones Thank you, Bowser. surrounding her and Ymir. Much love to you. On the first day that she licked the stones, she uncovered the hair of a man. On the second day, his whole head appeared, and on the third day, he was completely uncovered. He was called Buri, and before long, he fathered a son called Bor. Bor married Bestla, Whoa. the daughter of a giant, and they had three children together. The eldest being Odin, the second Vili, then Ve. The three brothers killed the giant Ymir, whose wounds unleashed a great stream of blood, drowning all the frost giants except Bergelmir. Who built an ark and boarded it with his wife. Holy they became shit. the ancestors of all frost giants. Whoa. Odin and his brothers took the body of Ymir to the center of the void, using it to create the world. The sea and the lakes came from his blood, and the land. Hey, Red, thank you so much for joining chat. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. This, this lore is pretty awesome. And if you really think about it, it has similarities to Greek mythology. Uh, especially now in this portion of the creation, where in Greek mythology we had the giants that were created then were the the first ones, and they then gave birth to Zeus and like the pantheon of the gods. But uh, Zeus turns on his father, and that's how he becomes uh, the uh, main. Papi Chulo of the pantheon of the gods of Greek mythology. So, in this case, while albeit it's not the same, it has a lot of similarities because uh, Frost Giants gave birth to Odin, then Odin, like it's depicted right here, kills the Frost Giant, Ymir, which is the first Frost Giant, which was the first giant 
created from the nine realms. It's a lot. Like it's it's to be able to ca keep up with everything. It's just it's it's insane, but it's so interesting too. And uh, again, <laughs> I may be ranting a little bit uh, before I hit play. Thank you everyone for joining in. If I have any lurkers, feel free to please engage. And everyone that's already in here, y'all are amazing. We'll continue. And from his flesh, the mountains were made from his bones, and the rocks. Taddy, thank you so much for joining chat. The Appreciate it. Skull was used to create the sky and was placed over Earth's four corners. Dark Prince, I appreciate from that. Thank flesh, you so much for that tier. Dwarves, one of whom stood under each of Earth's corners. They are called North, South, East, and West. Well, okay. The brothers then took the sparks and embers flying out of Muspelheim, placing them throughout the heavens, Love that creating email. stars. They were positioned That's in so such awesome. a way day could be distinguished from night, thus started time. The Earth took a circular shape and is surrounded by a deep ocean. Along the shore of this ocean, the brothers gave giants land to live on, which was named Jotunheim. Jotunheim. To protect themselves against these giants, the brothers built fortifications further inland out of Ymir's eyebrows and named it Midgard. Finally, okay. they took Ymir's we all know Midgard. and threw them into the sky, creating the clouds. From Driftwood, Odin and his brothers created new life. Odin giving them breath and life, Vili intelligence and feeling, and they form, speech, hearing, and sight. Thus, the first humans were born. And hey, thank you so much for that tier. I really appreciate it. They were given a home in Midgard. Much and love it's to here both where of you. humans still reside to this day. The brothers then fashioned a magnificent city named Asgard at the center of the world, Asgard. a place to call home. Odin became the ruler of Asgard and took the beautiful Frigg as his wife. She bore him the Asir, the divine gods who Make a thank you so much for joining chat. And so Appreciate Odin it. came to be known as All Father. Hope you're as having he a great day. Father of both the gods and mankind. To connect the realms, the gods built a bridge named Bifrost, which is known to the, the humans Bifrost. as a Bifrost. Next to Bifrost lives Heimdall, who guards it against the mountain. Interesting. See how something so it's a, like a rainbow is was uh used as an explanation to be the connection between asgard and uh midgar i believe he said and it's through it's through a rainbow uh the person writing this probably just looked up it was like ah you know what i'm gonna put that in the <laughs> that rainbow that's going in this text and I'm going to give it a weird explanation. And that I find that so interesting. That is so cool. Uh, I have not played Valhalla yet. I have it on my list. And it's actually pretty cheap now. So that's, I'm probably going to end up playing it. Uh, Kev playing. I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Hope you're having a great day. Ah, Mika, you're right. Between all the realms, you are correct. And I should know that. But... I, I said it wrong. You are you are right. They did say, he did say all the realms. Uh, haven't played Valhalla yet, uh, but yet yeah, it, it is definitely on my list. I have gone through a lot of the, uh, I guess you know, Vikings. If you haven't checked out Vikings yet, I mean, while it's not mythology like this per se, it's the story. It's just, it's just pretty fucking amazing, and. Uh, I haven't gotten into The Last Kingdom yet. That one is a little bit a little bit newer. Doesn't have the best reviews, but I'll probably end up checking it out. Uh, another one, good one is Beowulf as well. If you could check out Beowulf, that one is pretty great. And then, obviously, the Marvel Thor movies, which it's not exactly... Well, generally, they kind of... They are pretty faithful to the source, but what source are they faithful to? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, Beowulf was dope. Hellblade. Okay, I'll check it out. Definitely check it out. Have not heard of Hellblade. We'll definitely check it out. And anything, anything mythology, I'm definitely interested in. So yeah, please send it my way. Mountain giants and is the watchman of the gods. He sports perfect vision in both night and day, golden teeth, and a horn named Yalahorn, whose blast. Oh, it's a game. Oh, it's a game. 
to gain ten. In Jotunheim, a giant named Norfi had gotcha. a daughter by the name of Nine. Wait. She, in turn. Are you talking about like? I'm sorry, Hellblade Suna's sacrifice. So, did I say it right? Is it Suna? It, correct me if I'm wrong, Teddy. That one. Oh yeah, the first one. Oh yeah, that was a great experience. Oh wow, that was a. And I actually played it with headphones on. If you play it with headphones on, with a very high volume, dude, that'll it'll scar you. Cause those. Oh, I cannot wait either. The when they showed the trailer of it, ooh, that blew me away. But if you hear, like, it's just it's it's fucking mind blowing. Thank you for mentioning that game, Taddy. It was it was pretty good. It it, it was pretty good. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but I am on my way to Curly Snow. Thank you so much for rating. I really appreciate that. Much love towards you. Uh, yeah, it's. It, well, it got me specifically, like, it just, it, the, the continuous whispers, that's, it's so good. They did a good job with it. They did, they did a great job with it. And yes, you are absolutely right. Cannot wait for the second one. And I have not seen Top Gun, Maverick. I want to go to the, I might go today, might go tomorrow to see it. Everyone, like, everyone I know has seen it and has told me that it is by far one of the best movies they've seen this year. And I'm actually anxious to to see it. So yeah, Joseph, I might I might check that out soon. Most deaf. All right, press and play. Had a son called Day. Odin took night and day, giving each a horse and chariot, who were then bid to ride around the heavens. On Earth, a boy Mani, meaning moon, and a girl Sol, meaning sun, were taken and placed in the heavens by the gods. Sol pilots the chariot pulling the sun, with Manny controlling the moon. The siblings move across the sky with such haste as they are constantly being. Uh, Apollo. I'm telling you, they all. It's all. They're all intertwined, even though they're different. It's all. They all have something to do with it, which kind of makes sense now as to why. Uh, Santa Monica Studios would transition God of War from Greek mythology to Norse mythology. Huh. Squirrel, thank you so much for joining chat. I really appreciate that. I hope you're having a great day. Huh. I never put... I, I... It makes a lot more sense now. It just makes... I hope you guys have played God of War. A lot of it makes more sense hearing these videos. Wow. Okay. Sorry about that. Pursued by two great wolves, Skull and Hattie, who wished to devour them. In all, nine worlds were created to hold the different beings of the universe. Asgard is home to the gods and Midgard to the humans. Midgard to the humans. Alfheim to the light elves and Nidavellir to the dwarves, also known as the dark elves. The dark elves. Jotunheim was given to the giants and Vanahamir to the Vanir, a group of wise fertility gods. I'm Nibelheim doing pretty good, thank you, Squirrel. The Appreciate you being here. Which formed the cosmos. Finally, Hell is the land to which those who die dishonorably go to spend the afterlife. These worlds are all connected by the great ash tree Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil has three great roots. The first sits above Erd's well, the well of fate, where the gods sit in council every day. Beside this well live the Norns, three prophetic maidens who determine the course of human lives. Interesting. The second root of Yggdrasil hmm. is placed above Mimir's well, the Well of Wisdom. Beneath the final root sits Hevergelmir, the spring from which the primordial rivers originate. This root is constantly gnawed upon by the dragon Nidhogg. High in Yggdrasil sits a giant eagle who creates the winds when he takes flight. A squirrel named Ratatosk runs up and down the tree, delivering insults between the eagle and Nidhogg, provoking each. Odin, the Allfather, Lord All of Asgard, Father, and the, the Eternal Seeker of Knowledge, despite wielding a... See, I'm more into the first-person shooters when, they, when it comes to games as well. I don't really play much of the God of War series or Assassin's Creed. Right, let me tell you something. GTA is pretty cool. That is, that is pretty dope. It is so great to explore, Taddy. You are extremely, you're extremely right. 
Yeah, Agent. That I, I thought that pretty interesting, too, that they are considered Dark Elves. Ratasker! I don't even know what that means, but that sounds pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, Joseph, uh, GTA is a pretty great game. So, it's not like, while I see that like you said you're not into those, but GTA is still a great game, and... First-person shooters are pretty amazing. Hey, who knows? Maybe they'll make a... Maybe eventually they'll make a first-person shooter that'll be uh, about Norse mythology. Probably figure out how that's going to work, but... that I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, they threw a nut at... Mika threw a nut at Squirrel. I wonder what Squirrel's going to do about that. <laughs> Squirrel! Immense power values wisdom over all else. In his thirst for knowledge... Odin visited Hermir's well, whose waters hold the secret to great intelligence. A Norse well, battle royale, holy shit. Was not that would be so pretty awesome. Share the gifts of the well, Whoa. And so Astra sacrifice from Odin to prove himself. Or Taddy, a god's battle royale. Different gods from different parts of the world battling that. Holy crap. Don't worry. Odin. Gouged out one of his eyes and dropped it. Oh, there we go. Water. Mika, he just nammed it up. Vermeer offered Odin a drink, who happily accepted. Odin hmm. then sought the Norns, who shaped destiny by carving runes, which are Nordic letters, into the trunk of Yggdrasil. Tattoo Barbie, thank you so much for joining chat. I really appreciate it. Love that emo. Odin sought them out, but would once again have to prove himself worthy. Odin hung himself. Thank you so much for that, Fallen. Whilst impaling himself on his spear. He also forbade I have not seen King Fury Taddy Gaming. Kung Fury? Oh yeah. I've seen Kung Fury. But King Fury, that's that also sounds like a pretty good movie. If that were to be something that existed. Love that emote phantom. That's pretty awesome. The raccoon. We have a raccoon there's plenty of raccoons around where I live here in Northern California. Uh <laughs> yeah. Most deaf. The gods to give him food or water, leaving him to starve in pain for nine days and nights before the runes finally revealed themselves to him. From them, he gained invaluable knowledge and could now wield runic magic to help heal and shield his allies or smite and crush his enemies. Odin's Whoa. true goal is the gathering of knowledge in preparation for Ragnarok, the end of the world, in a desperate attempt to delay it. To prepare for the climactic fight, Odin sends his Valkyries, a group of divine maidens. It's still great, Phantom. To every battle to decide Again, who will be oh, Yosef, thank you so much for cheering. I really appreciate they then that. The most heroic much love to our team. And bring them to Odin's hall in Asgard, called Valhalla. Odin sits at the head of this vast hall with his two wolves, Geri and Freki. Odin himself needs nothing to eat and sustains himself exclusively through wine, which serves as his food and drink. Atop his shoulders perch two ravens, Hugin, Dude, he's a drunk. and Moonin, Memory, who fly off into the world every day at sunrise to gather. Squirrel, thank you so much for that. They I really appreciate the cheer. Daily feast and whisper much appreciated. The, of the, world into Odin's ears. the fallen warriors who reside in Valhalla I'll check that out, Taddy. I might be getting confused with something else. Every day they commence in friendly battle with each other. At Ragnarok, they will stream out of the hall and stand shoulder to shoulder with the gods against the forces of destruction. Thor, Odin's son, protector of mankind, and the mighty god of thunder, is the strongest of the gods. He sports a magnificent <laughs> mane of red hair and a giant rosy beard to match, flying around the skies. Interesting, I would have thought it would have been Baldur, but, or Odin for that matter, but Thor is the strongest of the gods. Hmm, interesting, I did not know that. That's Greek mythology, um, Joseph. Yeah, but if you think about it, I mean, Hercules is was considered one of the strongest ones in Greek mythology, so if anything, this could be maybe his long-lost cousin from another country. Who knows? But they do share one or two qualities. Like Also being that, you know, they're both sons of the Mac Daddies of the Pantheon and Again, they're both the strongest, so I, I there I can I could see where there can be comparisons between them both, but uh, yeah, that it, uh, Thor, um, sorry, uh, 
Hercules is uh, Greek mythology. His carriage drawn by two goats. While quick to anger, Thor is a well-meaning god and is often the unwitting victim of pranks played by the trickster god Loki. Thor is married to the goddess Sif, who herself fell victim to a prank by Loki. Loki hmm. thought it would be funny to shave Sif's hair off, but Thor, upon no, seeing his wife's Joseph. bald head, found little to laugh at. Not He grabbed a hold of Loki and was just about to start breaking bones when the prankster promised he could get the dwarves to fashion her a new head of hair. Thor agreed, and Loki soon had the dwarves mold pure gold into magical hair, which would grow and act like normal. Along with this, they made many other treasures for the gods, including an indestructible hammer. As this hammer was forged, a fly bit the smith's eye, causing blood to cloud his vision, resulting in the handle being unusually short. These gifts were presented to the gods, and the hammer was given to Thor, who was incredibly impressed despite its flaw. If thrown, it would never miss its mark, and could always find its way back to him. Small enough to keep in his shirt, this hammer, which crushes all in its path, is named Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Loki, the god of mischief and the nefarious son of a giant, aligns with... Interesting how Mjolnir is... Uh, it was the product of a prank played against Thor and... But a, a prank played against Thor by Loki using his wife, at, using Thor's wife as the uh, <laughs> subject of said prank. That is, it's, it's crazy. Which I think maybe that's where the short end of the stick comes from. Hmm. I don't know, but it makes sense. What do you guys think? Or against the Asir as he sees fit, often outwitting and pranking Thor, among others, for his own amusement. Loki went from a harmless prankster to a full blown enemy of the Asir as time went on. He had several children, including the giantess Hel, who resides over the realm that takes its name from her. Loki's other children include the Midgard serpent, Thor's eternal rival, and the giant wolf, Ven. Oh, Joseph, I like, um. I do normal, my goal, my main um, favorite type of game is, uh, I love open world first person, uh, open world third person. Uh, I, I mean, I played a lot of, I play a lot of everything. As long as you give me a great story or you, you keep me interested, I'm pretty good. I don't do sports games. I don't like, um, I don't like much of the, uh, what... I mean, I guess I play like Call of Duty and a lot. I'd have to get more into it, but I enjoy more story-based games. I like to be intrigued, and I like me a good, uh, you know, character. You know, you can do character development and that whole, like that whole thing. But again, primarily story-based games. That's that's my jam. So ranging from you know God of War, I love all the God of Wars. Um, I played all the Uncharted. Uh, Horizon was pretty great. Uh, Far Cry, I love Far Cry. Loved Far Cry Five. Not a lot of people liked it. I absolutely love that game. I am very interested in uh, cults. Not to be in one, but the like that whole thing of like cult mentality and. Uh, how far it gets that's I love that and I thought Far Cry 5 was amazing I thought it was great uh, the soundtrack is probably one of the best soundtracks I've heard to a game up until this point I can literally put that soundtrack um, driving especially when I drive like long distances dude and it's right on point with some cult shit so it's pretty cool but yeah, I play a lot of a little bit of everything, but mostly my main thing is story game, uh, story games. That's my jam. Moving on. Loki became truly irredeemable when he orchestrated the death of Odin's son Balder. It was pretty good. The most beautiful. It is. It gods. is pretty good because it's existing. So yeah, it is pretty good. Both demise, ones. Balder went to his mother Frigg for help, who blessed him against damage of all weapons of all materials. The gods held a contest where they shot at Balder with arrows, who laughed as they rebounded off of him. Loki was angered by his invincibility, 
and so disguised himself as a woman and approached Frigg. True. He asked if Baldur was completely invincible, and Frigg replied yes to all things except mistletoe. Loki immediately gathered some mistletoe and a Although if you really think about it, Death Clutch, uh, I think that Joseph Seed was one of the most realist ones out of all of the uh, Far Cry villains because even like Far Cry 6, well, I guess that, that would be like the second one that I would think that would be realer, like the realist because there has been numerous cult leaders like that and maybe not to that point obviously but there i mean there's been i mean we can't even how many cults have there been during our lifetime imagine before we we, we were born uh 60s 70s there was a whole bunch of cults that people didn't even know about and there were a whole bunch of cult leaders as well just like there are now so i think that maybe that's one of the realist villain maybe not the best one but he's the realest one because it's the most it's there's more probability of finding someone like that in the world than any of the other ones like far cry like three or four you know it's like they're great villains but they're it's it, come on it would take a whole lot for someone to get to that point joseph seed on the other hand we've had way too many of these of that of that type of character and that's that's a pretty good one to have, Joseph. Six was good, but five is five is my favorite. Approached Odin's blind son, Hod. As Hod was blind, he could not participate in the competition. So Loki offered to guide him, handing him a bow with an arrow made of mistletoe. Hod shot Balder, killing him immediately. In their grief, the gods appealed to Hel to release the fallen god. She refused, unless every being in the universe wept for him. The Asir managed to make this happen, apart from one giant the head, Asir. Loki in disguise, who refused to cry, leading Baldur to be robbed of his resurrection. The Asir took Loki to a cave and brought two of his children before him. They turned one brother into a wolf and forced him to savagely disembowel the other. They then tied Loki to the cave with his son's innards. He will remain there until Ragnarok, when he will break free to seek his revenge. Ragnarok is the end of days, when the gods are slain by the forces of chaos and the world is destroyed in fire. The end begins with three winters in which a series of battles rage across the world, where brother will turn on brother and the sanctity of kinship shall be broken. Then comes Fimble Winter, bringing ceaseless snow- Movie quote. Yo, Adrian! I'll give you another one. That's from Rocky. I'll give you one more. Mm. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Airplane. <laughs> oh, and freezing winds. Three of these winters will pass in succession with summer ceasing to exist. The sun and the moon will be caught and devoured by the wolves chasing them, and the stars will disappear from the heavens. The world will be struck by earthquakes as the monstrous sons of Loki emerge. The wolf Fenrir the goat will indeed. Flame streaming from his eyes and the Midgard serpent spewing venom across land and sea. The ship of the dead, known as Nagalfar, made entirely of the nails of the dead, will sail the frost giants of Jotunheim, accompanied by Loki and the forces of Hel to fight the gods. Amid the chaos, the sky is split apart by the soldiers of Muspelheim, led by their magnificent Surf, who will trample upon Bifrost, destroying it. Even Nidhogg, who gnaws at Yggdrasil's root, shall leave his home to aid the giants. Oh. Upon seeing Ragnarok approaching, Heimdall blows Gjallarhorn, alerting the gods to the end of days. The Asir and Einherjar march bravely towards the Chaos Horde, with Holy Odin shit. at their head. Despite Odin's preparations, the gods fall, one by one, until they are no more. Frey, the fertility god, advances against Sir, but is struck down by his flaming sword. Garm, the guardian dog of Hel, ravages the battlefield, leading Tyr, god of war and justice, to sacrifice himself to slay the beast. 
Oh. Thor takes on the Midgard Serpent, striking his foe with lightning and hammer, the serpent responding with poison and fangs. Thor emerges victorious, but soon falls to the ground dead, succumbing to the serpent's poison. Odin engages Fenrir, and while he fights valiantly, the great wolf takes victory, devouring the Allfather there and then. Shit. Upon seeing his father fall, the god Vidar rushes at the wolf, planting one foot in the beast's lower jaw and ripping Fenrir's head in two. Heimdall clashes with Loki, and each will fall by the other's blade. Finally, Surt covers the whole world in fire, destroying it in a mighty blaze. This is not the end, however, wow. as from the end of the old world, another can be born anew. Few escape Ragnarok, but those that do rebuild the fallen world. Odin's sons Vidar and Vali survive and inhabit the ruins of Asgard. Thor's sons Modi and Magni later join them, carrying Mjolnir with them. Baldar and Hod then ascend from hell together and reminisce on the bygone age. Two humans survive by hiding in a place known as Hodmimir's Wood and will have many descendants repopulating the world. The son will also have a daughter before wow. she dies, no less beautiful. Holy shit, like, I cannot wait for God of War Ragnarok. Like, holy crap, especially after hearing the story of Ragnarok now and how... Whoa, like, I can only imagine what they're gonna do. Like, how are they gonna... How are they gonna put this into a game? Like... Oh, dude, like, Squirrel, like... Did you see, like, the picture of... of oh... Famanita, thank you so much for following. I really appreciate that. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, yeah, it's just the fact that I mean, I, I don't know if you saw like the, like how they depicted Odin before and everything that's gonna happen and Loki and uh, especially after we know what happens in God of War, uh, Loki in that ship that's made of the fingernails of the dead, dude. How are they going to put this into a, a visual game? They should make a movie out of this. Apart from like God of War, like they should make... I'm surprised with the amount of CGI and all of this, you know, coming up with the, the recycled ideas. I'm surprised that they haven't done a movie about this mythology or about like something more recent with like... I'd be blown away. I'd Hell yeah, I'd watch that in a movie theater. But then again, but again, God of War Ragnarok is going to be, that's going to be off the hook. Like, I cannot, I cannot wait, cannot wait, cannot wait. And now with Ragnarok being explained the way it is, and actually the next video is a crash course about Ragnarok. I wanted to include it because of the game to be, I know that, I know that there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be things that taken from this for the game and why am I excited? I am really excited. To fall than her who shall follow her mother's path in the sky. Upon this new world, the population will prosper and rejoice in the peaceful years to come. Look to the horizon, however, to see a dark shadow loom. The dragon Nidhogg carrying corpses in his great talons. Holy Ragnarok shit. will come again. Audible is a great way to enhance your semi- Damn. It's crazy. So Hi, crazy. I'm Mike Rignetta. This is Crash Course Mythology. Last week, we looked at Jewish, Christian, Zoroastrian, and Islamic apocalypse myths. And today, we're going to look at one apocalypse myth, one we've all been waiting for. The battle for the ages, the war to end all, the inspiration for no fewer than 11 metal bands, according to Encyclopedia Metallum. That's right. It's the Norse apocalypse, Ragnarok. Battles, earthquakes, fire, blood, a giant wolf, grounding dwarves, and Loki who is the worst. That is, until he's not. Because he dies. Oh, spoiler alert. Uh, I should have seen that coming. Should have seen that one coming. Many versions of the Norse myths, Ragnarok is the conclusion of one Loki story that we've already covered. You might remember a few weeks ago when we talked about the beloved god Baldr and his brother Hodor, how Loki tricked Hodor into killing Baldr by throwing a dart made of mistletoe, and then Loki disguises himself as a stubborn frost giant lady in order to prevent Baldr from escaping the underworld. Ugh, the nerve. That's where we left the story last time. 
And Dude, Loki is really the worst. That's that's insane. Like I feel like the Marvel universe hasn't done it the justice that it should because exactly until he's not which is but wow yeah i mean it's it's they should yeah. I'm, I'm so i i actually imagine things but i think that it would have been great to maybe depict loki a little bit a little bit more evil than they did in the marvel universe i know he ends up i mean if you've seen the show and whatnot you know how he ends up how the whole thing ends up but this is the loki that like the the god of mischief this is indeed some mischief. While Loki may have succeeded in getting rid of Balder, his pleasure is short-lived. When the rest of the Aesir, the Norse gods of the sky, figure out they've been duped, they fly into various rages, Loki gets scared, and poof, Amskrae's out of Asgard way. The rest of the Aesir form a posse to bring Loki to justice. Loki decides to hide out in a cave near Franon's Falls. If anyone comes by, he can just transform himself into a salmon and hide in the churning water at the bottom of the waterfall. And sure enough, the Aesir posse shows up, Loki turns into a fish, and dives for safety. This is when Kvasir, the wisest of all the Aesir, pulls a Sherlock Holmes and notices a burned fish net in the remains of Loki's fire. Fish, he says to himself. Why would Loki be thinking about fish? So the gods make hmm. a new net, Thor uses it to drag the nearby water, and Loki is caught. So Aesir decide to not kill Loki, but to punish him. And boy, do they ever. First, they find Vali and transform him into a wolf. Then, wolf Vali eats Loki's son, Narvi. Then, the gods take Narvi's entrails and use them to tie down Loki inside a cave while Skadi, goddess of skiing, hangs a snake from a stalactite above Loki's head, positioned so its venom will drop bit by bit right onto Loki's face. Damn. For eternity. Somehow, petty. Loki's wife Sigyn arranges petty, petty, to petty. stay with her husband, where she sits and uses a wooden bowl to catch the snake venom. But even so, whenever she gets up to empty the bowl, a few drops land right on Loki's face. Damn. Rinse and repeat, except with snake venom for eternity. Or as Crossley Holland put it, that is how things are and how things will remain until Ragnarok. This is actually where the timing gets a little complicated. The story of Ragnarok is obviously very old, but it was originally told as a prediction. This is how the world will end later. In theory, Loki is still tied up in that cave somewhere, like right now, trying to get snake venom off of his face. So the Ragnarok myth, it's less a story of something that already occurred and more like a script for something that's yet to come. According to myth, we'll know that Ragnarok is nigh because first we'll have Fimbulvinta, three long winters all in a row. Cold, bitter, unending winters that make people hungry and then hangry and then fight and kill each other. Brothers killing brothers, sisters killing sisters, whole families turning against one another. Like when you're on vacation and everyone skips lunch. Civilization <laughs> crumbles. Buildings are destroyed through war and neglect. Humanity itself deteriorates and people become like wolves to each other. And then, when nearly all of the people have killed each other and those who are alive are acting like beasts, the mythological wolves of Skull and Hati will come out and eat the sun and the moon. The stars will fade and everything will go dark and cold. And there will definitely be no more smorgasbords. Boy, Norse, howdy, things haven't even gotten going yet because now the earthquakes begin. We've talked about Shit. apocalyptic earthquakes before, the kind that topple trees and crumble mountains, but these earthquakes will also cause the earth itself to shift. And guess what? To break the bonds, keeping Loki and his giant monster wolf son Fenrir in captivity. And once Loki is free, the myth tells us, three roosters will crow, waking the giants, the warriors of Valhalla, and the dead of single hockey stick hell, the place. Meanwhile, Whoa. Loki's other son, Jormungand, the Midgard serpent, will churn oh, great, the seas as he heads toward the plain of Vigridir. Newly free and awake, Loki will lead his monstrous sons and all the minions of hell to march on Asgard and challenge the Aesir. He'll be joined by the giants, led by Surtur, who carries a flaming oh, sword. 
as this terrible force marches across the Bifrost <laughs> towards Asgard, the great rainbow bridge it has some will collapse to the world. behind them. Heimdall, right, who I'm sees it further than any other god, will spot Loki coming and sound the Yaller horn in warning. The Allfather, Odin seeing the impending battle, will turn to his trusted advisor Mimir for advice. But when giants are marching, and your rainbow bridge is in pieces, and Fenrir and the Midgard Serpent are loose, a pep talk isn't really gonna help. And so the Aesir will gear up for battle alongside the Aener Jar, 800 of the most honorable dead warriors from Valhalla. The Aesir and the Aener Jar will follow Odin to the plain of Vigridir to face Loki's onslaught, perhaps best dealt with in the thought bubble. The battle begins and quickly turns into a collection of heroic duels. The fight doesn't go well for anyone. Tyr and Garm kill each other in battle. Thor defeats Jormungand, but not before the dying serpent spews venom all over the Thunder God, and Thor falls, poisoned. Even Loki Shit. and Heimdall fight so savagely that they slay each other, which I guess means someone else will have to be the worst now? Anyone have any nominations? As for Odin, he attacks with his mighty spear, Gungnir, but Fenrir seizes Odin in his mighty jaws and swallows the Allfather. With Odin consumed, an unlikely hero arises. Odin's son, Vidar, and his great magic shoe. Vidar's mythical shoe is made up of all the thrown away scraps of all the shoes that have been made since the beginning of time. It is huge and indestructible. And so Vidar stops his mythical Wait, what? shoe down on Fenrir's bottom jaw, grabs the wolf's top jaw, and rips his head apart. Guitar solo. The end of the battle comes. Surtur, leader of the giants, finally defeats Freyr. He turns, and with his flaming sword, sets all the worlds ablaze. According to one version of the story, Asgard and Midgard and Jotunheim and Nivelheim will become furnaces, places of raging flame, swirling smoke, ashes, only ashes. The Aenar Jar will die, men and women. <laughs> yeah, Mika, I'll be honest with you. I, th I was, right before they said it was a shoe, I was, I thought... A thousand things before thinking it was going to be a shoe. I thought it was a blade of chaos or, I don't know, something like that. Or something like mystical, but no. Nah. A shoe. That was it. That was... <laughs> a shoe. The biggest shoe made from all of the shoes ever created during mankind. That is, I feel like they ran about, they ran out of ideas there at that point. But moving on, I would love to see that in a movie too. I, I would love to see that. I would love to see how again they're gonna depict this in in God of War because again this is true. What this is the actual lore. So this is what it says so i'd love to see it in a movie and i, I want to see how they're going to do this in the game as well probably in the game they're going to get away with it in a, in a better way I, i'm i'm confident in that but a movie it'd be interesting to see how they do a big shoe like that made of all of the shoes ever created <laughs> could you imagine that that's but I think that they would probably do it like a stone that you get or something and you and like you just it's like a like a summon type of thing and then this huge shoe just falls out of the sky or something. I I don't know. Probably something like that, but it does sound pretty interesting to see on a screen. Like <laughs> it's that's crazy. Again, I, I wasn't expecting it to be a shoe. Alright, moving on. Children in Midgard will die, elves and dwarves will die, giants will die, monsters and creatures of the underworld will die, birds and animals. <laughs> Ragnarok is like, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, everyone's gonna die. <laughs> will die. The sun will be dark, and there will be no stars in the sky. The that is true, bro. Into the sea. You Thank are right. Bubble. Okay, so look, Ragnarok doesn't end well. The world has been destroyed by flames and all the people and all the gods are- You know, that's true. I think you're absolutely right, Squirrel. Think! Love seeing you in chat. Uh, but you're right, Squirrel. 
uh, I think that maybe they do like a, a an a Easter egg reference. But then again, then again, I think that with how, um, I guess, uh, relevant at this point, Elden Ring is, and how how it has affected, you know, how. In all honesty, how our artwork is made in games and how far uh, the imagination of creatures can go. I can only wonder if maybe that'll have some type of influence with games moving forward. And God of War has, they've always, they've always had uh, their way of doing like uh, villains and like monsters and stuff that you fight against. So I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm confident that maybe they'll, they'll, it could be an Easter egg reference, but I think that because of Elden Ring, maybe they they they're inspired to do something crazy like that. I don't know. Maybe that's just maybe that's just me. Maybe it's all in my head. Are dead and everything is darkness. Except in this end of the world story, there is a silver lining because the worlds are consumed by that flames, is true. What remains. Is water. <laughs> I mean, As that is seen true. In creation stories, water has pretty <laughs> impressive generative powers. Accordingly, the earth will rise again out of the water, fair and green. The eagle will fly over cataracts, swoop into the thunder, and catch fish under crags. Whoa. Corn will ripen in fields that were never sown. But hold on, it gets even better. It turns out that not all of the gods perish in the massive inferno. Odin's sons, Vidar and Vali, and Thor's sons, Magni and Modi, survive the fire. They make their way to the plain of Edaval, where they're joined by Baldr and Hodor, who have come back from the world of the dead. Hanir and the children of Vili and Ve round out a well, new pantheon. The best part is what happens when the... Squirrel, now, now that they mention that, and seeing the events of God of War... Hmm. Oh boy. Ragnarok might be a lot more different. Think about it. These new gods gather together. Hmm. They sit down and they talk, telling the stories that only they know. The same stories of the Norse gods ah, that we're talking about <laughs> right now. In it's the an old game. Of Edibol, they find it's some of the it's actually of the free Asian, on... Including uh, Mjolnir and special yeah, golden right chessboards and their pieces. In a recent retelling of the Ragnarok story by Neil Gaiman, these pieces are the characters from the myths, Loki and his children, the Frost Giants, and Sutter. Gaiman ends the story writing, Baldur will smile like the sun coming out and reach down and he will move his first piece. There's a lot to unpack in the Ragnarok myth, starting with whether or not it's really a reflection of the pre-Christian Germanic tradition. You probably noticed a lot of similarities hmm. between the Christian story of the apocalypse from the blowing of the horns to the earthquake and the fire. But more importantly, the most beautiful and beloved of the gods, in this case, Baldur, returns from the dead. I have not, Our main Joseph. sources for this story, I have not the played Eddas, it. were written down well after Christianity became dominant in Northern Europe and Iceland. Were the original myths influenced by Christianity? Well... Depends upon which scholar you ask. Interestingly, unlike some of the so. other apocalypses, this one is a beginning as well as an end. The Christian and Zoroastrian stories also establish the beginning of a new age, but Ragnarok, even though it's clearly set in the future, prefigures a renewed world that looks a lot like the old one. In Gaiman's retelling, we almost have the feeling that Ragnarok has happened, even if we're specifically told its events are in the future. The idea that the end of the world can also be the beginning of the world isn't unique, though. In Hindu mythology, the Fourth Age, also known as the Kali Age, sees humans afflicted by corrupt rulers and all the social order upended. As in the Norse story, the world will be consumed first by drought and then by fire, followed by a storm lasting many years and the rebirth of a new world here on Earth. The cyclical nature of the Hindu myth, as well as the twisting of time, is expressed this way. A day of Brahma, born from the lotus, lasts a thousand periods of four ages. A night, when the world is destroyed and made into a vast ocean, is of the same length. And at the end of the night, Vishnu, unborn, having awakened, takes the form of Brahma in order to create as it has already been told to you. This Indian apocalypse story and Ragnarok are both oddly hopeful. They explain that destruction is necessary for creation. 
Unlike the apocalypse of the Bible's book of Revelation, they don't promise a new world only for the righteous, but a rebirth for everyone. You get a rebirth, and you get a rebirth, and you get a rebirth. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. That was awesome. That was Love Love Crash Course. They make a great video. It was extremely interesting. Um, yeah, this was fun. Wow, there's just so much that just putting putting together with uh, God of Wards. That's insane. Um, yeah, this was extremely fun. I learned a whole lot. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Mythology is so cool. Yes, it is. It indeed is extremely cool. I... It's so much fun. It is so much fun. Uh, I am actually prepping up a raid. Uh, I see that Senpai is online, so I'll raid Senpai. Ready to go. There he is. Thank you everyone for coming in today. Thank you for joining my Norse mythology talk. I appreciate everyone that was here. Everyone that is here. Uh, this is part one. Part two will be the stories of Norse mythology. That'll be another stream for another time. Uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. is our true crime night. So Wednesdays is True Crime Wednesdays, period, point blank. Hope to see everyone there. Next Saturday, I'll be talking about the Dominican Republic. Because it's, why not talk about it? I'm from there, so uh, it's very interesting, has a very interesting history to it. Uh, there is so much that has happened in that country that it's just worth sharing with everyone. And why not? The more we know, the better. <laughs> Why, though? Because it's interesting. I'm going to that. It's, a, it's interesting. While the current situation there is not the best, and I, I know it's not the best, and I do admit it, the history of our country and the fact that we went through such a bloody dictatorship and all that is worth, ta it's worth talking about. And it's worth knowing because, again... The more we know, the better. And eight, I actually have those on my list. So once I'm done with Norse mythology, I'm going to be jumping into uh, those other ones. Uh, Hindu mythology, Chinese mythology, uh, Japanese mythology. Oh, I, I actually, it's weird because I played this game on, uh, it's, a, it's a game that's on Apple Arcade. And it's about, it's like a samurai thing, but they use a lot of, the, the villains are, characters in Japanese mythology and yeah after I played that that was I was like yeah, I definitely need to I definitely need to get into uh, Japanese mythology but it's just it's like African mythology is pretty interesting as well like I'm gonna yeah I'll have a stream about one of about each of those in the near future just uh, follow me for that and definitely uh that yeah, I am sorry. It's just I I just started thinking about all of them at the same time, and they're all just so they're so awesome and they're so beautiful in their own way. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for being here today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you taking some time out today to be here on my show. I'll say goodbye now. This is the King Angel Play Show. Have a wonderful day and peace. Uh, we will be raiding Senpai. Thank you very much. Thank <music> you.